first I want to say welcome to all of you and thanks for taking the time to be with us this morning. It's my favourite part of the week really to have you all in the kitchen on a Monday at 11. I love it. But special excitement this morning is of course that um, Melissa and I are together in the kitchen. It's a first. It is a first. It's a first ever and uh, I'm pretty excited because Melissa is a pretty special cook and knows so much and so for me to have such a authority in the kitchen is pretty special and I've got lots of questions I've been saving up to ask. I'm you. excited too. What a beautiful kitchen and yeah. also, you know, don't sell yourself <laughs> shy. You're a great cook. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to, um, Mel, do you want to just tell them about, will we start with Denera? Yeah, so yeah. just to let you know, those who don't know, the platform that we're on this morning is the Denera Project. It sort of came out of isolation where we were looking for resources for when we were all stuck at home. Um, and it's a platform where you can find live talks and um, on-demand podcasts and movies. And there are so many resources. It's in food and the arts and theatre and Judaism and spirituality. It's a huge, wonderful website where I really do suggest at the end of this just to jump onto danira.org.au see what's coming up there's um, different categories and um, it's wonderful for mm. Lisa and I to be running the food, food. channel so uh, yeah we're very excited so oh hello hi Raquel oh from Panama oh great to wow. see you back again I love that you're with us from Panama Welcome. that is fantastic so we're going to start by just putting the mulled wine on because it needs to sort of simmer, not even simmer, it needs to sort of heat for an hour. We're not going to leave it for an hour. It's perfectly drinkable after 10 minutes, to be honest, but it just gets more flavour as time goes on. So I'm just going to quickly show you how we do that. We're going to get that on and then we're going to go on to the pastries and have more of a chat about all our favourite snacks. And I've got so many, so many favourite snacks. I went out for lunch yesterday with my family. It was my kid's birthday, my twin's birthday, actually. They turned 26, which was very exciting. And the restaurant was a degustation, you know, with seven courses. And the, before the first course starts, they bring you snacks. And yeah. everybody at the table said, God, we love snacks. Yeah. Everybody loves snacks, yeah. right? It's the yeah. best thing. It so is. we're going to share these snacks. So let's talk mulled wine. This is the sort of thing you're going to have if you're in the snow, if you're in winter, if you've got a fire going, if it's cold and windy outside, any of those, you need to make this mulled wine. So I'm going to put a bottle of wine in a saucepan and I'm using a, a Shiraz. It's my favourite sort of wine. And don't, don't use a wine that you wouldn't drink, okay? So it's not the sort of thing you think the wine's going to change. It's not. You're going to have the flavour. Don't use your most expensive though. This is a, a really reasonably priced Shiraz that I think is perfect for this. So pick your favourite. It can be a Pinot Noir. It can be a robust red, an Italian something then they need half a cup of sugar <laughs> yeah i know yeah we've already had this discussion but mel will tell you some alternatives she's not as into sugar as i am mm -hmm. um, and we're going to add some spices so i've got a whole nutmeg which i'm just going to smash with my meat mallet because i just want to oh, in half it's actually in about six pieces but it doesn't matter we're going to strain it anyway i've got three cinnamon sticks just beautiful. beautiful. I can smell from here. Mm. Three cinnamon oh, sticks. Yeah, I've got six cloves. Do you like cloves? Are you oh. a clove? Yeah. Oh. See, my problem was that I went to the to a dentist when I was young that used to use oil of oh. cloves on your gums oh. when you had a filling and, and so cloves, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I've washed these, of course. I'm gonna do four strips of each of the peel. And remember, it's always easier to do the peel or the zest before you juice it very hard to do it once it's been juiced. We've made that mistake a lot. Yeah, and it's also important not to get the pith, the white bit, because it's the white bit that is really quite bitter and will change the flavour of the mulled wine. So this is it. It's really quick. It's a really quick recipe. And now I'm just going to put the juice of one orange and one lemon. And this is all for one bottle of wine. Um, I think that, in, I was thinking about alternatives to sugar for those who don't like it. I like my mulled wine quite sweet. So maybe start with half the sugar that I recommend and see how you go. I mean, what would you use instead of instead of sugar? Yes, yeah, so I would use, I mean, I don't think 
I don't think it was sugar. I don't think it needs it because I find the oranges are quite sweet, but I would use coconut sugar. Coconut sugar tastes like brown sugar and it's just more pure. It hasn't been, hasn't been through the processes like white sugar or raw sugar and um, it's easily digested. But I would recommend, like Lisa just said, just start off with half of it. It's very easy to add more. It's very hard to take, take it out. It out. Yeah. yeah. So this half a cup of raw sugar is exactly how I love it. Um, so use that as the maximum and start with less if you prefer less. Okay, so I've got the juice of one, of one lemon and one orange, plus the peel without the pith. And then I'm just gonna turn it on. And I don't want to cook it on a very high heat. I just want the sugar to dissolve, which it will in a minute. And then we're going to cook it. I don't want to boil it because if I boil it, it's going to boil all the alcohol off and it is supposed to be an alcoholic drink. So, um, I so it's really wanting to macerate the spices and the fruit, the zest. That's right. It smells good. It already smells good, but it doesn't smell as good as it will in, in half an hour yeah. because it's at the moment it's still just a collection of ingredients in a pot they need to spend time together to yeah. yeah all right yeah. so that's it that's how, how you do it i'm going to leave that on if we weren't doing this i'd leave it for an hour even longer and then i will strain it and drink it but you'll see we'll do that at the end so that's that i'm going to turn it down now and that is the mulled wine done beautiful gorgeous so oh, now it's pastry that. time okay so we're just doing a little dance. We've rehearsed already. Very good. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make my anchovy pastries for starters, and then Mel's going to do her amazing katafi. How do you pronounce it? Katafi. Katafi yeah. pastries. So this has two ingredients: pastry and anchovies. And I love this brand. I don't know if you are yeah. familiar with this. They yeah. sell it. Um, you know, all the Harris good food Farm. stores, Harris Farm, Parisi's. Um, they've also got a website that's called Karem, C-A-R-E-M-E. -E. The website tells you where you can get it. They have butter puffs, they have short crust, they have spelt short crust, and they have sour cream pastry, which is what I'm using. Of course, you can make your own. Um, and in the Monday Morning Cooking Club, most recent book now for something sweet, we have this recipe, but with pastry that you make from scratch. But we wanted to do something quick and easy today. So we're gonna use this and it's really good pastry. And that's really... the beautiful thing about making hors d'oeuvres. It is, for me, it's a last minute thing. Once I've got my dinner party ready, and depending on my amount of time, I'll go, right, what can I quickly now make for drinks? Yeah. So always having some pastry in the freezer yeah, yeah. is... And, and the good thing about these pastries is that you can make them, roll them, and then keep them in the freezer till you need them. So I would freeze them on a big tray. I'm just going to take the anchovies out. I'm going to do about... Um, I'll do a half batch, I'll do eight. You can put them on a tray and put them in the freezer and once they are solid frozen, you can put them together in a Tupperware with baking paper. They're not, you don't need to be precious with them. They're not particularly fragile. And then you just pull them out of the freezer and put them into the oven when you want them. And oh, my mouth you know, it's, is it's watering. From the, from the anchovies. Oh, I could just eat that whole jar right now. So you have to, you, so not yet, you can decide which anchovies you like to use. I probably, you know, remember that there's only anchovy in pastry, so you don't want the crappiest anchovies in here. Now, if you're doing a huge sauce and you and you just wanted the saltiness and the umami of the anchovies, you could probably get away with a lesser quality. But for this dish, you know, you could even go an Ortiz one, which are, I mean, they are very expensive, but they're absolutely delicious. It depends on your level of anchovy love, I think. Or you can come on my Italian food tour and I'll take you to the local Italian deli where you can buy oh, so cheap, yeah. imported, beautiful Italian anchovies in little jars. I find I like the little jars. And it's really important what you did there, Lisa. You don't put your fingers in the jar. You always use clean. You. <laughs> <laughs> you always use clean utensils. That's true, that's yeah, true. Because you don't use the whole jar and you need to keep it. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. So I'm just draining them because I just don't want oily pastries and, and they just do need to be drained. So I'm going to flour the bench before I put the pastry on. And this is one that I probably should have cooked straight and cooked, should have used straight from the fridge, but I didn't. So I've been out for about an hour and my kitchen's quite warm. But that's all right, we'll manage. So this is a big piece and I'm going to use 
luckily, Mel just suggested that I have knives handy. <laughs> um, let's just do about that size. It's really beautiful pastry. It, I, I really can't recommend it highly enough. And right. you can refreeze it. You know that that can be. It says that it doesn't say that, but I will do can. that. I know. I you agree. You need to make sure that those ends are tucked into the pastry so it doesn't dry out. Yeah. And that can be um, frozen. So always have a little bowl of flour when you're working with pastry, and flour your rolling pin. And some some doughs and pastries roll easily without flour, but this one it really. I don't want to stick, and I don't want to risk sticking. So what we're trying to do is to make a rectangle about two anchovies in height and about, well, we'll see how many, it might be more pastry than we need. So I'm gonna roll it out, not very much. This pastry is pretty much ready to go. I'm just making it into a nice, even rectangle. Can you see that? Can you all see the, the pastry nicely there? Yeah, okay. And then it's just a matter of lining them up like this. Quite close, probably a centimetre between them. And you'll see what I'm going to do. And I've got way too much pastry here for, for eight. This is probably enough for 16. So we'll just do eight just to show you. And just line them up side by side like little soldiers. Do you remember where this recipe came from, the original recipe? Yeah, so this recipe comes from... Um, well, it's in the book because of the pastry, interestingly, which comes from an amazing cook by the name of Marika Brugman. And I went to one of her workshops, remember her, in um, the Victorian Highlands in about 1989 or 1990, a long time ago. And she taught us the sour cream pastry. And then my friend um, Judy used to serve this all the time. Anytime you went to Judy's house, you would have anchovies in pastry. And so I asked her for the recipe and... She actually doesn't quite recall where she got the twisted anchovy from, whether it was from Marika or somewhere else, but they're now Judy's. They're right. now Judy's. Beautiful. So I'm going to cut it down the side. You can see how nicely it's very even. It's very nice. And I'm going to cut it across like this. It's gorgeous. Put this on top like a little lid. And with my finger, I'm going to feel in between the anchovies and just make a joint, like join the pastry in between. Like a ravioli. Exactly. And then I'm going to get the knife. Can you can see that sharper one? Or is that actual? So good having someone else in the kitchen. It's actually a little fantastic. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut between them. I mean, it's such an easy, easy thing. And it just adds value that you can keep it in the freezer. You don't need that end. And then it's just a matter of twisting. Mm, gorgeous. Like this. Twist and onto a tray. And if I was, um, if I wanted to eat them today, I'd just keep them in the fridge till later. But as I said, it can keep for weeks in the freezer. They will freeze exactly like that. That's and then what just, exactly you know, I was going to say is that... If you snap freeze them, which means keep them flat on a tray and they're separated, once they're snap frozen, you can then throw them in a bag and they won't stick together. Yeah. If you throw them all into a container, they'll stick straight away. And then all you have to do is pull them out, throw them in the oven before yeah. that's delicious. And these are going to cook at 200 degrees for about... Um, I'm going to look at 15 minutes and see how we go because I find that this pastry, for whatever reason cooks a bit quicker than the, the one you made, uh, one that I made, and I don't right. know why. I think it's full of butter. This one or yeah. mine? No, I think the more butter, um, it will cook quicker. So this is it. It's just delicious. And, and you can see two ingredients, five minutes to make, using things. You've got the pastry already in your freezer. You've got the anchovies already in your pan to treat. Oh, it's a really quick and easy thing. Beautiful. So this is going to go in the oven now, and I'll clean the bench for you here before we go. So... Okay. You can put that in the top oven for me and I'll clean the bench for you. Oh. Um, I just want to show everybody, and I think I've shown you before, the only thing that you need to clean a bench where you've been working with flour is this. If I got a wet schmutter and cleaned it with wet, I'd just make glue. So all you need to do is scrape it like this, and it is such a useful thing to have. 
Okay, so that's it. And now my bench is nice and clean for you to come in. Okay, you happy with that? Very good. Thank okay. you. Your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to my taffy parmesan olives. And again, it's another very simple, easy recipe. It's very much last minute. And in the same way, you can prepare this ahead of time. So all we really need, we've got melted butter. We've got some stuffed olives. You know, I saw recently a, um, some beautiful new stuffed olives that some company have brought out. Okay, so here is the katapi pastry. It's very fine hair. I'm going to show you closely. So where you, where can you buy katapi pastry? You can buy it in specialty stores. Um, you can oh, buy it. Amazing. Isn't it beautiful? It's just amazing. It's like doll's hair. It is. It's, it's, it's just, and it really, you don't need to be sensitive with it. So what I'm doing, I'm pulling it apart. Where you buy it? You buy it in Middle Eastern wholesalers. I know that Parisi sell it. Some supermarkets sell it. Uh, you can freeze it easily. Katafi is Middle Eastern. It's used in knafe, which is a custard-based slice. And the katafi is used on the top. A lot of places sort of chop it up finely, where I quite like it, lovely and hairy like this. It's just, I just want, I just want to play with it, actually. It's, it's, Isn't it amazing? It's the most remarkable thing. Um, I know that Antonio Filo, the people that make Filo also make one. Yes. Which is probably the, the supermarket version this is yeah yours is amazing i think this is the best one it I've is ever beautiful seen. it is this is a local lebanese guy uh, just, just really and it's a magical thing so the recipes are on the website if you haven't seen them already with this katapi pastry we basically have melted butter i always prefer to use salted butter i really especially in something savory i like the salt so I'm going to add the salt into the butter so that dissolves. And then I'm going to, first of all, add the butter to the, to the pastry. Melted butter, salt into the pastry. Then you need to, thank you, a little assistant there. <laughs> And um, so then we sort of want to massage the butter, the melted butter and salt into the pastry. It is a little bit messy. You know, I remember in the old days, mum, you'll remember this, if you had to dirty both your hands, well, you never would. You only ever dirty one hand in case the phone rang and you'd have to go and grab the phone. So I always remember having like one hand behind your back. These days, it doesn't matter if the phone rings, but in the old days, you always had to answer your phone. There was yeah. a whole thing. There's a whole thing with when you make schnitzels and you're egging and crumbing that yeah. you should only use one, one hand, hand for the dry. wet and one for the dry. But exactly. I always end up, I don't know about anyone else, I end up with both hands covered with egg uh, and crumbs. That's like always, Lannington's. I, I always just, keep one for coconut yeah. and one for chocolate. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not, I just can't keep to it. I start off really well yeah. and then it all goes yeah. off, off the track. Okay, so once the butter is nicely distributed throughout the pastry, we then add the Parmesan cheese. The Parmesan cheese, again, if you come on my Italian food tour, you'll buy beautiful, fresh, freshly grated, powdered, all different ways of the Parmesan. And, and basically that's it. It is so good. You should smell this Parmesan cheese. Mm. Oh, wonderful. When, when are you starting your food tours again? Well, I've started um, visiting all of my suppliers. You can't put 10 people into a little shop at the moment. Yeah, it's so it's going to be another month or so. Can't wait. Yeah. Okay, so then what you do is you take a little bit of the pastry and, um, you know, there's no real measurements. It's a little bit of hair. You get a stuffed olive. You place it inside there really are no rules but if you look closely 
I get the bottom of the pastry and I wrap it around the olive. Like there is no rule. It's just like wrapping up into a little bundle and that is it. You can see that there. You don't want it too big because you want to be able to put it all into your mouth in one bite. If it's too big, you're going to have pataki pastry all Definitely. over your lounge room. So that's basically it. I'll show you again. A little bit of pastry. You put the olive, you get the pastry at the bottom and basically you just run it around and wrap it up. Okay, not too big is really, and if you're unsure, you always just bake one or two of them and test it out before you then make 20 of them. Is this something you think you could freeze raw and then bake from the oven or would it, would it not? Yeah, work? no, you can. You've just got to make sure that it is um, airtight. Once it's frozen, you've got to make it airtight because there's so many layers here it can go off and there's butter yeah, yeah. and there's cheese. So, so long as it's airtight, at this stage, you would freeze it, like I said, snap freeze it, which means freezing it on a tray. Yeah. And then you, uh, once it's frozen, you would put it into an airtight container. And what else would you put in if, if you didn't like olives? Anything you can... You know a pickled cucumber or well, you don't even have to use the olives mm. you could just make a little ball of cheese you could put a little mm. baby boccancini and uh, you know uh, nice. and that could melt you really you know this recipe has just been made up i really i didn't see it anywhere it's just with my family five o'clock comes it's time for a whiskey and there's always something that we need to eat and um it really is a made up recipe. Back in the 70s, my mum is there this morning, we used to make a cheese pastry. I think you have a cheese pastry in one of your recipes. Yeah. We used to make a little cheese pastry, make it into a little circle on our hand. We used to put an olive in the middle. We used to wrap it up into a little ball and that was in the 70s. Love oh, it. We've moved it to the 21st century yeah. now. I love the sound of that. So like a short crust biscuit yeah. Yeah. with cheese. Yeah, around yeah. an olive yeah yeah delicious i think i'll be doing that who's that okay so oh sorry we missed that question um the name of this pastry yeah so it's k-a-t yeah you've done it k-a-t-a-i-f-i thank you katafi yeah. so the other options for this pastry it is very versatile you can make a crumble and instead of putting your um your oats sort of from streusel on the top. You can use katafi pastry. Mm. You don't use cheese, but you could mix the butter and mix some coconut sugar. <laughs> I'm going out to buy coconut sugar this afternoon. It's funny because looking at it, it looks like vermicelli noodles. Like I keep thinking it's noodles and then keep reminding myself it's actually phyllo pastry that's shredded. So it goes with so many things. Apple yeah. crumble would be a great idea. Yeah. Sort of like a cross between an apple strudel and a yeah, crumble. I like that idea. I mean, even if you're making any dessert, you can get the katafi, put some butter through it. You can sprinkle some sugar on it. You can flatten little discs on um, on the tray, and then that becomes almost like a beautiful crispy decoration for any dessert. If you're poaching pears, if you want to add a layer. Love anyway, yeah. yeah, this is great. Delicious. I mean, they look they look so nice. I just love the look of them. They're so rustic yeah. and imperfect, which is what is appealing about them. Yes. Yeah. Really nice. And if you bake them, like how many hours ahead could you bake them before eating or are they best no, eaten? No, last minute. Yeah. So I would make them, they would be the last thing that I would make when I'm entertaining. And I would wait for the guests to arrive because they only take 10, 12 minutes in the oven. You want to serve them hot. That's good to know. Okay, so you know I could stand here all day making these. So we have a in our recent book, which is now for something sweet. We have one savory chapter, and the name of that chapter is a drink and a nut. And people ask me why is it called a drink and a nut? Well, the story goes like this: When um, I was on a panel a few years ago with Marilyn, one of my co-authors, and we were asked, "What do you call it when people invite when you invite people over just for a drink in the afternoon?" and a snack. Do you say, come over for a drink and a snack? Do you say, come over for hors d'oeuvres? What do you say? 
And I said, well, growing up, my mother always used to say, come over for a drink and a nut. That's what she said. And so growing up, I said, so I said, come over for a drink and a nut. And everyone thought it was the most hilarious thing to say. But for me, it's what we grew up with because my dad, my late dad used to roast almonds. He never really was a cook. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. He was a very good barbecuer, but he used to roast kilos of almonds in a big old baking roasting pan that my mum had and the house would be full of the smell of these Beautiful. roasting almonds so and then nice. he would put them allow them to cool i think that i, I kept trying to re repeat exactly what he did because if you cook them too hot they they don't get the crunch that if you cook them for a little yes. bit longer and slower yeah. yeah so it's probably about 30 to 40 minutes at 160 is probably ideal but you've got to taste them the issue is you can't taste them immediately because yeah. you've got to let them cool and yeah. you know yeah. so you've got to work that out whatever the time is in yeah. your oven yeah. and he used to keep them in a giant glass jar in the pantry and every time someone would walk past you'd go in you'd unscrew the lid and you'd grab a handful Gorgeous. and they were just amazing so that's a drink and a nut so that's that's Beautiful. my mum's snack it was always you know a scotch and a, and a nut and you you sound like you had the snack thing happening in your house i'm a bit yeah. envious <laughs> a long time actually. ago i'm just going to put these into the oven they go in at 180 for about 10 to 12 minutes <laughs> they are really good yep very good so i think i'm going to actually give them only another two minutes and then we'll have to have a look at that so as far as other snacks goes just while we're waiting for them to cook um another favorite of mine is to make toast from old sourdough. So um, anytime I've got leftover bread and it's, we eat sourdough all the time, whether it's seeded or brown or white, we slice it thinly, put it in the oven, either spray it with olive oil spray or paint it with olive oil on both sides, a little bit of salt and cook it for about 15 minutes at 180, give or take, turn it over if you have to. And they keep, I think I've got some, no, they've all been eaten. I thought I had some. Um, they keep for weeks and then you can just buy a dip. There's so many good yeah. dips you can buy nowadays. Yeah. Um, Gorgeous. And just have toast and dip and Gorgeous. I love it. It's funny that you say that. The other night I had the family over for dinner last minute. I made bruschetta. So I had some leftover bread yeah. and I won't throw away anything. Yeah. And I just did some garlic and parsley and salt and melted butter and I brushed both sides of it. And then mm. I like to fry it in the pan. Yeah. So I have it all ready. When yeah. everyone arrives, fry it in the pan and it's beautiful and warm. Is the bread quite thick? How do you slice it? Yeah, it is oh, a little bit thick. And Tell then I again. top it. So I just do a knob of garlic, yep. some parsley or any green just to give it some colour, yep. some yep. salt in melted butter. Then with a pastry brush, you, melt, you mix it up. Yep. I brush both sides of it and I leave it by my stove for when everyone arrives. And then when you pan fry it, it softens oh, the bread. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and then so I top it that. with pesto. You know, you can buy beautiful sun-dried tomato pesto, black olive tapenade, you know, whatever's around. It really is. I think so it would good. be nice just on its own though. It sounds yes, delicious. It is. Like oh, I love that. Bread. Yeah. I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Um, Oh, Continental Foods on Carlotta Street, Natam and often yes. has the Kataki pastry. Yes, Thanks Sharon, do. that's great. Um, oh, Rayleigh adds chili flakes to her short crust pastry. Rayleigh adds chili flakes to everything. Does she add it to her oats, Rayleigh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's see how my pastry is going. I think I'm going to give them another minute. I just want to show you. They look pretty good. Maybe not. Gorgeous. Just have a look how lovely they look. Beautiful. I'm going to give them another minute. So um, for us, drinkies time is five o'clock. I think we call it drink is time or whiskey o'clock. And, you know, there's always pickled cucumbers in the fridge, pickled vegetables, you know, with leftover pastry. When you had all your bits of leftover pastry, I would sprinkle Parmesan cheese on it, roll it out and twist it and use all those off cuts yeah, as a Parmesan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love the sound of your drinkies. I'm quite envious. I don't know if, if any of you missed um, Mel's pickle workshop a couple of weeks ago on Denera. It was fantastic. And there's been so much amazing feedback and you can watch it now on the Denera website. Um, they've got all the videos on YouTube. It's fantastic. So go back and watch it and make them. 
I've heard from so many people how good the pickles were. Uh, um, and I haven't had a chance yet to make a batch, but I'm desperate to. I'm going to actually soon. You know, it's like you make your challah every week. Yeah, Once yeah. you've had homemade pickle cucumbers in your fridge, yeah. you always have to have a jar there. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to yeah. start that. Yeah. So this is, I had a little taste before. Um, I've got a clean spoon. Do you want a little taste? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. I'm just going to check this out. Okay. It's going to be way too sweet for you though, I want you to know that. Sweet. <laughs> but so good. The orange and the lemon zest has infused beautifully over such a short time. The clove is there at the back of your mouth and the cinnamon, it's perfume. That is delicious. Yeah, it is. Absolutely delicious. I'm just so happy we're here with all these drinks and snacks at, at 11.30 on Yum. a Monday morning. So good. These well are... Dessert. Look how good they are. I mean, look stuff. how gorgeous they are. are I, sure? I went to grab my camera to take Nothing. a photograph. Um, they're really... And they smell... You know, you can smell the butter from the pastry. You can smell the anchovies, of course. I've given these to friends who don't eat anchovies, and I think they are the gateway thing to anchovies. Even if you don't like anchovies, it's so good in the pastry that you'll see. You'll gorgeous. love it. All right. Delicious. Get rid of this? Very good. Um, do we want to do this all together? Or... No, I don't think that's okay. just, I want to enjoy this. Yep, okay. So perhaps a little wine with them might be nice. A little mild wine. So I have got a strainer and a little jug. Here's a little serviette. I bought these. Um, Look at these, aren't they cute? I went to Turkey. A few years ago when I found these gorgeous little linen beautiful cocktail napkins oh, in a store yes. and they were I don't know 50 cents each beautiful and of course I bought 12 and I'm so regretful because I should have bought a thousand yeah you know they're, they're just so lovely Very cute. and they look so fancy and they're yeah. really not beautiful. they're just lovely okay so is this gonna work hold the strainer up yeah when you hold the strainer up it Oh, no, not ideal. That's right. fine. That'll do. Very good. A big mess, but that's okay. That's all good. Okay. All right, a little glass oh, for us. Smells so good. Hands up if you wish you were here. <laughs> <laughs> it smells. I wish so you were here too. Good. I actually wish you were all here and we could do a live in the kitchen one of these. That would be really fun one day. Maybe one day. All right. Okay. Pour a little bit for you. Got my little straw. I can't think of anything better to have on a Monday morning when it's cold outside and... Did you hear the rain last yeah, night? Yeah. Early this morning? It's just fabulous. Crazy. All right. So wow. This is lovely. So really what we'd love to hear from today from you is any of your thoughts, what you would like to see us cooking. You know, between Monday morning cooking club, Lisa's doing a lot of favorite recipes. I'm running a lot of skilled workshops. So if there's any anything that you're stuck on that you really would like to learn, just put your comment in the chats and we will be happily assisting you. I just want to see if I can read these comments. I'm oh, sorry, I have to lean forward. Um, oh yeah, Denise, I wish you, you could come and visit your family in Sydney all the way from Canada. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, very hard. I'm just gonna see if there's anything else. No, that's it. Someone said they made the pickles. Yeah, Sharon made the pickles about four days ago, just tasted one for the first time. Yeah. O M G with yeah. exclamation marks. Wonderful, Sharon. All so right, are we gonna taste this? Okay. Ready? Ready? Smell this both ah. smell it. It smells pastry, anchovies. Mm, beautiful. Mmm. Delicious. Very good. The pastry is actually much softer than I thought it would be. And because you can see all the bubbles on it, which means there's a lot of butter mm. in that pastry. It's so nice. And it, it just is a perfect combo with the salty, salty anchovies. The pastry is not salty. It's, it's lovely with it. Yeah. And buttery. it's crisp on the ish on the outside and soft on the inside. Delicious. It's really very good pastry. It's amazing that you can buy it. You could also do it with puff pastry, but but bought puff pastry is not my favourite. I don't know. Would you? You can buy butter puff, and butter puff is mm. um, is a you know more my preference. But this is beautiful pastry. 
And the anchovy, I mean, I can eat anchovies by the jar full, but it isn't that strong. And um, and it, uh, I, do you eat these cold? I would prefer no, to I eat them warm. Yeah, yeah. They are but, but they could be at room temperature. They, you know, they they could be. Um, I probably could have cooked them for another minute, but I think mm, I, I think could go. Gorgeous. I could go room temperature for those. Yeah, I would be quite happy to. Yeah. This, but this is it way too sweet for you? Undrinkably so. Way too sweet, but the flavours are beautiful. And I love it. I mean, I have a sweet tooth. Well, not, a, not so, I didn't think I had such a sweet tooth, but this to me is the perfect mulled wine. And I wish you could all taste it. To me, it feels like winter. It feels like mm. being cosy. It's the snow. It's the, for me, it's back in Germany when I was a teenager. And it's just, it is easy to drink because it's got the, the orange juice and the lemon and the spices. So it it's terrible because it's too easy to no, drink. No, it's really easy. I could drink the whole bottle. Yeah. And I couldn't drink a bottle of wine on my own, but I feel yeah. like I could drink this. Yeah. It's really good. So we'd love to hear if anyone makes it. Um, please, if you're on social media, on Facebook or Instagram, tag Demera or Monday Morning CC or Mia Kachina, any of us, because we'd really love to see if you have made it and you did like it. Um, uh, Oh, hi, ladies. Please teach apple strudel from ah. Candy. Actually, Candy, we are. I am going to do a very special event in the next few weeks with, I think, the apple strudel queen of Sydney, Jane Grossberg. That's yes, coming up. That We're going to do that because that is an amazing thing to see. She does her pastry from scratch and it's, it's like a wonder of the world, actually, to see it in real life. Um, Beautiful. What pastry did we use for the anchovy twists? Um, Denise, we used, it's a brand called Karem, C-A-R-E-M-E, -E, sold in Australia, I think made in South Australia. It is the best pastry on the market and we use the sour cream pastry, not the puff and not the short crust. But you can use puff and you can use short crust. Do you yeah, want to grab yeah, the other? Yeah, you could, yeah. And like we said before, you can make them raw and freeze them and then you can just pull them out. These are the Katafis cooked and they look divine. I can't wait to buy some of these. How are they on site? Okay. All right, we ready? Ready. This is fun. The little one there. <laughs> Here we go. I love the look of them and I love that on the bottom they're golden and crisp from the butter. Yeah. And the top is is all like like hairs, hairs not a good thing, but it's all noodly and lovely. All right, yeah. ready? Yeah. Uh, you got the whole thing in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do I have to do the same. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Not really good. Mm. So good. What I love is you. Um. I keep thinking it's going to taste like spaghetti. Mm. It's pastry, and it mm. and it's buttery and crisp on the outside and then you get to the olive on the inside which is such a surprise yeah it's just a contrast of textures and flavors all the way through it's the parmesan when you put it into your mouth you can smell that parmesan it's so cheesy and it is beautiful that contrast between the crunchy outside mm. and the softness of the olive yeah yeah it is buttery it's not too overly buttery it is delicious with a whiskey, with a glue vine. I'm just looking at the whole bowl of, of melted butter, parmesan pastry over there and wondering what else we could do with it. I mean, it's yeah. so delicious. Yeah. And I think that I used to be afraid to work with this pastry because I never understood how to use it and what to do with it, yeah. with the breaking it up. And I think you've showed it really well. It's actually not hard or complicated or anything. You've just got to find that pastry. Absolutely. That could go on top of anything. If you had a pie, if you had yeah. a bolognese, yeah. instead yeah. of putting mashed potato, yeah. you know, yeah. you could use it anyway. You can wrap anything in it. You could wrap up some vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. You could put it around you know, zucchini or a roasted carrot or... I've also seen it a long time ago wrapped around um, actually a prawn. Sorry for those yeah, that's who exactly don't eat right. It was wrapped around a prawn and then yeah. deep fried. Yeah, that's and exactly it was, right. So you could, do, yeah. you could do all sorts of other things. Yes. It's not a prawn. So you, you can deep them. fry it, but I prefer to bake it. It's just you don't really need bit. to, actually. You don't need to deep no. fry it. Because so you long get... as you've got your butter in there and the salt, it, you really it's get delicious. that. delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. Well Beautiful. done. So let me see. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. This is so nice. Okay, so let's say, yeah, Denise thinks it does look delicious. It actually is so delish. 
and Tanya, thank you. So Rayleigh says kosher sausage inside. Um, inside the... Yeah, inside. Oh, that would yeah. be nice. Yeah, bushed. Like bushed. Yeah, but remember, whatever you put inside, it needs to be cooked beforehand. So um, you need to be careful. I mean, the prawns, because you're deep frying them, yeah, they would cook. be, yeah. they will cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So let's unmute everyone and see if we can have a chat, if anyone would like to ask us anything or tell us anything. But before I do that, I just want a quick reminder of everybody, to everybody what's coming up in Denera. On Thursday this week at 11 a.m., I'm very excited. I'm going to go to Gary Horwitz's house. He's a good friend of mine. He is a, am I allowed to call him out a balabusta? He's an entertainer. He He's a, a cook. He's a retail genius. He is a very showman. funny and he's a showman, all of those. And his food is, is, yeah. is, is outstanding. So I'm going to go to his kitchen. We're going to talk about his life story. He's from South Africa. He's got a great story to tell. He started the Bay Swiss um, group. Remember that back in the 80s? Yeah. And I'm going to go, he's going to talk, he's going to make us laugh, I'm sure, and he's going to cook. Yeah. So that's 11am on Thursday, please sign up. And next Monday morning, I'm going to bring you something fabulous from the Monday Morning Cooking Club. Don't know exactly what it is yet, but we'll put it online tomorrow, but I promise you it will be fabulous. Beautiful. Very and good. And next week, have you got a, can we remember next week? No, no. not after that. Yeah, that's okay. Thing. But please remember to check on the Denera website for all sorts of things. And there will be a survey sent to you sometime soon. And one part of it is about the food channel. And we'd love to know what you think, what you want. Do you want more of this or more of something else or less of this? Because we, we're doing this so that all of you love, you know, so that, so that there's something for you guys to enjoy. And we're happy to do anything. We'd love to know what you want that will make you happy. So please let us know. Um, okay, so, oh, Bala Boss is the masculine. Oh, ah, ah thank you. Are. Thank you. So he's a Bala Boss. Yeah, yeah, he is a Bala Boss. <laughs> I wonder if he'd be happy being called a Bala Boss. Okay, so let's unmute now and we'll hear anybody's questions. If we can just speak one at a time, that would be great. Oh. Hello, hello. Sorrel, can we unmute, please? Any chance today was recorded? Yes, they're all recorded and you can watch them all later um, through the Genera website, which is a great thing. Uh, everyone yeah. can unmute if they have, oh. I can hear some people. Please Morning. unmute yourself. Say hi. Hi there. Oh, there we are. Good morning. You'll need to unmute yourself by clicking on the unmute button. <laughs> there we are. So we'd love to hear your feedback. If there's anything that you would like to see us cooking, we're more than happy to work around that in our program. So good. So good. <laughs> it is good. It does need I, to be drink, drunk warm. I'm yeah. not, yeah, it does. I'm not going to function the rest of the day. I want you to know this after a glass really? of this. I don't know. I'm, I, how am I going to do anything? Really? I'm just too relaxed now. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. Please go and make it now. It's Please delicious. go and make it. It's really lovely. And do you, I think you could actually keep that in the fridge once. You it's, can. You absolutely yeah. can. And then the flavours are so much stronger. Yeah. The zest and yeah, the spices. Yeah. And I would probably, I'd probably, um, it probably doesn't, does it need to, you could actually not strain it till you then reheat absolutely. it later. Leave the rinds in, leave the cinnamon yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then it will be absolutely yeah. even more flavoured than it is now. It's what I good. actually would do if I was entertaining, I would warm it up in the morning, sit it to the side and let it infuse and then last minute heat it up to yeah. serve it. Yeah. I'm inspired to actually make it now for visitors. I haven't made it for a couple of years yeah. till we started talking about this and I'm bringing it back to yeah. my household. Yeah. I think well, it's now's a, a good time, winter yeah. time, it really is. It's Any questions, time. anyone? We'd love to hear something or, or a comment or... Fabulous show. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so I love, much. I don't have anything to do with cooking. Oh, good. Yeah, so do I, actually. So do I. I could watch anything. You're right. I could so, eat anything. Yeah, I could too. That too. <laughs> Is anyone cooking along today? I wonder if anyone's actually cooked along today. We did go quite fast, but um, hopefully if you did cook along, you, you managed to follow properly. And if you did, we'd love to uh, see the photographs. Tag us in. 
a, a Denera project or Monday morning CC. CC or Mia Cucina underscore, tag us in and we'd love to share your, your creations yeah. this morning. Yeah. Lisa, I wanted to thank you for having me. And, and you must say, <laughs> you want chiffon cake? A chiffon cake? A chiffon yes. cake? Yeah, because I have a problem in Vancouver. I used to have a great recipe, the Myrna Rose and one in South Africa, but it just does not work. Like, I don't know if it's the flour. Um, probably the same if it's at sea level. I'm at sea level, which is the same as Sydney. So maybe if you make that, I could... What, where at what point doesn't it work does it fall out of the tin when you invert yeah. it? Or, it, yeah. it it rises but it doesn't and then it falls out the tin yeah okay so so are, you using, are you using the right tin the it's not it's oh, not oh, absolutely. absolutely i love baking i baked okay. together, and it was um, great i'll tell you what um are you using a different oven from when you made it the first time um no, well, yes, obviously, because I'm uh, in Vancouver. Uh, okay, so, so I'll tell you what it, it works, might. Like yeah, I'll tell you what it might be when when the cakes fall out of the tin, and, and we get emails all the time because it happens to all of us. Does it happen to you, chiffon cake? And the reason yeah. is is because it's just the slightest bit undercooked. You may not even notice it, but if there's any moisture at all in the cake, it's going to fall out when you turn it upside down. So I would suggest you add 15 minutes cooking time and see how that goes if that doesn't work then add another spoon of flour and 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 message me privately through monday morning cooking club through our website happy to talk to you about it we have had a lot of chiffon cake experience and it, it always it seems to always solve the problem cooking cooking time or that tablespoon of flour so it, it probably will need more cooking time and you can turn the oven down a little bit so it doesn't go too dark on the top mm. Yeah, okay, go. I've, I got it right once. I yeah. put an extra in yeah. and I don't know if that did it or what it did. It. No, well, just flour is different, but anyway, yeah. thank you for the help. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. You. Anyone thank else? You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And at least tin might help with the uh, chiffon cake. Say that again, sorry. Not greasing the tin. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. It. Mustn't grease the tin and it mustn't be non stick, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, it's interesting that they sell non-stick chiffon tins I and know. I don't understand why. Like with their well, own, I mean, I mean, way, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense to me why they're even made, but that's another story for another day. We're thinking actually yeah. of doing a chiffon workshop sometime in the future um, because I think it's a cake that a lot of people struggle with. Whereas once yeah. you master the idea behind it, yes, you can yeah. do anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And also the egg sizes makes a big difference too to the recipe. Yes. Because, you know, it yes. says one egg, but one egg can be 50 grams or 70 or 80 grams. Yeah. And same as with machala. If I put in extra large eggs, it's a different story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Thanks, ladies. You're great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this morning. Thank you, Lisa, again, for opening up your kitchen and for inviting me in. Thank you. It's been really... It's so wonderful it having you. Fun. I'll do it again, actually. Yeah. And I've got one more thing. Um, ah, yes, the Tunisian brick pastry in the almond cigars. Where do you get it? Have you seen it around um, the stores? Uh, which pastry? Tunisian brick. It's in one of our recipes. You'll... Um, Mandy, I think you'll have to just Google it and it would be probably available in a store like Parisi's or perhaps you've got to go to a Middle Eastern store. Um, just Google where to buy yeah. and um, something will pop up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's also a fantastic pastry, actually. It's a, it's a different sort of pastry that makes wonderful almond cigars or sweet treats or right. I've also had savoury things wrapped in it and fried. Very yeah. good. That's that, and that one you do deep fry, I think, as a matter of course. Okay, um, thank you, Sylvie. Great to see you here this morning. All right, we're going to sign off then. I think if no one's got any more questions, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Hope thanks for your you. support. Hope to thanks. see you on Thursday at eleven with Gary. And Come check on. out the Denira website, denira.org.au, to see what's coming up. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a great week.